Index laws, example five, which involves combined index laws. That means we could be using any one of the four index laws or even maybe all of them within one question. Okay, now the pointers that I've given steps one to four are really important when you're doing combined index laws. They outline the order in which you should do things. You'll notice step one says if you need to use the third index law, and in case you've forgotten, the third index law is the one with brackets, right? So if I had three squared to the power of five, I would multiply, giving me three to the power of 10. This index law should always be done first, or most of the time at least. Now, if we look at both these questions, there are no sets of brackets. So that tells us that we really probably aren't going to use index law one today. So not index law one, but step one today. Step two is the next step that we usually focus on, which is to multiply or divide coefficients. Now, whenever we get two sets of fractions together, I really like to combine it as one fraction first. It just makes your life a lot easier. And it's not that difficult to do this. All you do is you write it as one fraction and you combine everything at the top and you combine everything at the bottom. And I'm actually going to rewrite the order of things a little bit. So I'm going to put the 10 first because we really like to have the 10 at the front. And then we've got an A to the power of 3, an A to the power of 2, and a B to the power of 3. We've really just bunched everything together and just changed the order. The same with the bottom. Um, I'm going to bunch these together, except I'm going to go 5 times 3 is 15. And then I've got B to the power of 4. I've got an A and I've got a B, right? So I kind of did step two there. I, I multiplied the coefficients and I've made it as one fraction. All right. Now we can really focus on, um, actually still focus on step two, which says to multiply and divide coefficients because I can do 10 over 15. Now you might remember that when you can't divide it, I cannot divide 10 over 15, you need to simplify. And 10 over 15 is actually the same as 2 thirds. So we're just going to rewrite this as 2 over 3. And then I want to do a bit of combining. Um, sorry, I want to do a bit of step 3, which is to add and subtract powers. For instance, I've got a to the power of 5, 3 plus 2 is 5, and b to the power of 3. When I look down the bottom here, these have a power of 1. So I'm going to have b to the power of 5, since 4 plus 1 is 5, and a to the power of 1. All right, notice that we're, getting a, we're combining them, we're simplifying, and just doing one little step at a time. Last of all, I want to go, all right, I've got a to the power of 5, divide a to the power of 1, which gives me a to the power of 4. 5 minus 1 is 4. And with the B's, I'm going to go 5 minus 3 is 2. And I'm going to leave my B to the power of 2 at the bottom because I had a bigger power at the bottom over here. That one's simplified as much as possible. So as you can see, these questions are really challenging. All right, question B. Now, it's a little, little bit more challenging when you've got to combine a fraction with something that's not a fraction. But it's not too difficult if you just make it over 1 and then combine them. So we're going to combine it and go, all right, 5c cubed times 2c. 5 times 2 is 10. And then we've got c to the power of 3 and c1 next to each other. And looking at the denominator, 1 times 10 is 10. And then we've got c to the power of 3. All right. Um, if we look at 10 over 10, when they're both the same, we mentioned you could actually cancel them, which, which we're going to do. So we'll change to red. These tens can cancel. In fact, we can cancel the two c's to the power of 3, which leaves us really just c to the power of 1, or c. All 